Welcome to Selecting the Ideal Data Structure, Stacks, Queues, and Priority Queues. My name is Chris, and I will be your guide. This course is the third of three parts on how to select the ideal data structure when coding in Python. As you might guess from the title, this course concentrates on stacks, queues, and priority queues. Additionally, it also talks about queuing if you're in a multi-threaded environment and how to make sure that it's thread safe. Just a quick note, all the code samples here were tested using Python 3.9. For the most part, earlier versions will work fine. I'll try to point out any differences as I go along. There's all sorts of different ways of organizing your data when you program. The selection of the correct data structure can have a big impact on your code. Each kind of data structure has a different purpose, strength, and weakness. Python, being batteries included, comes with a lot of the most common data structures that you could ever possibly need. This course focuses on three types of data structures, stacks, queues, and priority queues. Other kinds of data structures were covered in the previous two parts. Links to those parts are available in the notes below. Stacks and queues are similar data structures. Stacks are last in, first out, also known as LIFO. That means the last thing put in is the first thing taken out. Queues are similar to stacks, but they're FIFO, first in, first out. So the first thing put into the queue is the first thing removed from the queue. And priority queues are a special type of queue that instead of being FIFO, store items in a priority order. The built-in list type can be used for stacks, queues, and priority queues. In the case of priority queues, it takes a little extra effort, and for the stack and queue, you have to make sure you use the right calls, but a list will do in a pinch. Because a list is flexible, you can mix LIFO and FIFO on it. This may not always be ideal. The queue library provides a bunch of implementations of stacks and queues. These are more specific than a list and might meet your needs a little better. And finally, if you're after a priority queue, the heap queue library is probably your best bet. Next up, I'll introduce you to stacks in Python. In the previous lesson, I gave an overview of the course. In this lesson, I will be introducing you to stacks in Python. A stack is a data structure that holds whatever you put into it. What defines a stack is the way the stuff inside is accessed. Stacks support LIFO, or last in, first out, semantics. This means that the last thing you put in is the first thing available to be taken out. Consider a pile of trays in a lunchroom. A new item, in this case a tray, is put on top of the stack. This is called a push. I haven't seen one in years, but in olden times, the stack of trays often sat on top of a big spring, so that no matter how many trays were in the stack, the topmost tray in the pile was level with the counter. Putting a new tray on the stack is pushing this spring down one by one. Taking an item off the stack isn't called a pull, but a pop. You are popping the tray on top of the spring-loaded pile off. Due to the nature of the pile, you can't randomly access an element in the stack. Push and pop are the only two options. Consider the following example. I'm going to push 24 onto the stack, then push 35, then 88. Now, if I want something in the stack, I have to pop an item out. When I pop, I get 88. If I push something new, it goes on top, burying the 35. Popping the stack results in 13 coming out. Stacks tend to be performant. A good implementation will do pushes and pops in order one time. Stacks are commonly used for language parsing, depth-first searches of tree-type data structures, and execution call stacks. The built-in list type supports both push and pop operations. This course is the third in three parts. As discussed in the first part of this course, lists are actually implemented as dynamic array structures. This means that they have direct access. Unlike their name implies, they're not a linked list. Python lists resize as needed when inserting a new item means they need more space. 
When using a list as a stack, the push and pop operations are order one, except when Python decides the list needs new memory allocation, then it's a bit slower. When Python allocates space for a list, it oversizes. Not every insert is going to require new memory allocation, meaning not every push is more expensive than order one. Although stack operations are normally called push and pop, because the list is more than a stack, it deviates from this terminology. When using a list as a stack, you want to use the append method for the push operation and the pop method for a pop. If you stick with these two operations, you will have a performance stack. If you mix in the use of insert, one, you're potentially violating the strict LIFO sense of a stack, and two, you're not going to stay in the order one performance range. Let's look at using a list as a stack in practice. I'll use the append method as a push. Then push some more. And one more time. And now I can examine the list. You can see that the list is ordered in the way items were pushed inside. Calling pop pulls the last item off the list, the last thing pushed on, and returns it, in this case, code. Once again, looking at the list, and you see eat and sleep are what are left. Pop some more. And again. And one more time. And this is what happens if you pop an empty list. And that is how a list can be a stack. Next up, I'll show you how a queue can also be a stack. In the previous lesson, I showed you how to use Python's built-in list as a stack. In this lesson, I will show you how to use the double-ended queue and LIFO queue structures instead. Inside of the collections library, you will find a double-ended queue called DEC. A double-ended queue is one that supports adding and removing items from either end. And because of this, it can be used either as a stack or a queue. Underneath the covers, DEC is implemented as a doubly linked list. It has good performance for insertion and deletion, but poor performance on random access. Let's see it in practice. First off, I need to import it. Now I will instantiate a DEC. I use append to push on an item. A little bit of deja vu. And here's the resulting queue. The append left method puts something on the other end of the queue. Here's the result. Notice that this is breaking the idea of a stack. We've just inserted a lunch tray into the bottom of the pile. Just like a list, the pop method takes the top item off and returns it. There's a companion to append left. It's pop left and it does what pop does, but from the other end of the queue. Again, not strictly a stack operation. Similar to the list in the previous lesson, a deck can be used as a stack, but not strictly so. Debugging code is hard. Debugging multi-threaded code is doubly hard. Whenever you have multiple threads in a system, there is a danger of race conditions. At any time, the operating system may decide to stop paying attention to the current thread and schedule a different one. If you're sharing state between threads, bad things can happen. To resolve this kind of problem, your code needs to be able to declare a section atomic. It can do this with a lock. The LIFO queue class found in the queue library is a thread safe stack. It guarantees that operations on it are atomic and won't be mangled by the operating system context switching to another thread. Consider a program with two threads and a shared LIFO queue object between them. First, I'll start off with the familiar eating action, and then thread1 will push it onto the LIFO queue using the put method. Now eat is in the LIFO queue. Let's do that again with each companion, sleep. So far, so good. Now, thread two can call get on the LIFO queue to retrieve the top item off the stack, resulting in it receiving sleep. 
Thread 2 making another call to get pops eat off the stack. If thread 2 makes another call to get, it blocks, as there's nothing in the stack to pop off. Meanwhile, back in thread 1, you remember thread 1, right? It was so long ago. I'll take the next step and code. Calling put pushes it onto the stack. And now the block on thread 2 is released and it receives our third activity. Alternatively, thread 2 can also call get no wait, which instead of blocking will raise an exception. This allows the thread to check if there's something in the queue for it, but keeps doing other things if there isn't anything waiting for it. Let's open up the REPL and take a look at LIFOQ. First off, I'll import it from the queue library, then instantiate it. Now push on the eat action using put, again for sleep. And examining the queue gives you a not so helpful output. LIFOQ uses the default wrapper, which makes debugging it a little more difficult. I can use get to pop an item off. I can use get no wait to get something else. And then one more time, and I get the exception. The empty exception is raised because there was nothing in the queue. That's all for using queues as stacks. Next up, I'll talk about the pros and cons of the different ways of getting stack-like behavior in Python. In the previous lesson, I showed you the deck and LIFOQ objects and how to use them as stacks. In this lesson, I'll talk about how to choose between the different ways of getting a stack in Python. If you aren't doing anything particularly complicated, just stick with a list. If you're worried about performance, then it might be time to move up from a list to the deck object. Deck objects are more performant because they don't have to pay the dynamic resizing cost. And it is equally performant no matter which end of the queue you are dealing with. This of course brings up an interesting point. Technically Python just doesn't have a stack. Whether you're using a list, deck, or something else, it is only your discipline as a coder that will make the object stack-like. At any time, you can always cheat and get at things outside of LIFO order. Finally, if you're doing multi-threaded things, LIFOQ is thread safe and the way to go. Thread locking requires additional overhead though, so only use this in the multi-threaded case. Otherwise, you will pay performance penalties. For further reading, the Python documentation is a good place to start. Here are the docs for DEC and for LIFOQ. If you'd like to know more about linked lists, this article is a good starting point. Or if you want to dive deeper into concurrency, this course may be of interest. If I recall correctly, the guide for this one is particularly handsome, witty, engaging, and humble. That's all for stacks. Next up, I'll start the section on queues with the FIFO queue.